Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. We have some breaking news. Yuri Prohaska is injured and out of his UFC 282 fight against Glover Teixeira. And not only that, Yuri Prohaska has vacated the light heavyweight title. He is now officially the former light heavyweight champion and the original co-main event of UFC 282 Magomed Ankalaya versus Jan Blahovic has been elevated to the main event and it will be for the undisputed light heavyweight title. And there is a lot to unpack with this news. I'm going to give you my reaction to the news, an early prediction for the new light heavyweight title fight, Magomed Ankalaya versus Jan Blahovic. I'm also going to answer the question, why did Yuri Prohaska vacate his belt? And we're also going to talk about the Yuri Prohaska USADA situation because I believe there is more than meets the eye with Yuri Prohaska in USADA. And if you joined me earlier for the stream, I told you guys exactly what I was talking about on the stream, but we're going to talk about that later in the video. This is absolute crazy news, but it does not shock me. I made a video earlier this week about Hamza Chimaya versus Alex Pereira. And I told you guys, sometimes the UFC, when they're looking for a new main event for a fight card, especially a pay-per-view fight card, they will kind of throw out wild potential fight offers in hopes of having a bunch of different options and having a bunch of backup plans. And I thought the way Hamza Chemaev tweeted out that he had agreed to fight Alex Pereira at UFC 282, the way he was very specific about that, I thought there's a chance that the UFC sent him a fight offer for Alex Pereira on UFC 282, just trying to get as many options as possible. And I said in that video... If Yuri Prohaska is injured, they're in a terrible spot because nobody wants to see Jan Blachowicz versus Glover Teixeira too. It's not going to sell. It's not going to intrigue a lot of fans. And then you have the possible option of Magomed Ankalaev versus Glover Teixeira. That is a tough ass to take on Ankalaev on two weeks notice. And we're going to talk about what Glover Teixeira had to say about that in a little bit. But when I got I initially saw this news, I wasn't super shocked, but I was really disappointed. I made a video yesterday, my top three reasons I love UFC 282, and the number one reason was Yuri Prohaska is fighting on the card, and he is one of the most exciting MMA fighters ever, and that video is completely ruined. I was going to release it earlier tonight. As soon as the news came out, I knew the video was basically ruined at this point. Um, so I'm going to have to remake that video. I'm super disappointed at the news. I really wanted to see Yuri Prohaska fight. I mean, he's had three fights in the UFC. He fought Volkan Ozemir, he fought Dominic Reyes, and he fought Glover Teixeira and won the title. All three of those fights were crazy exciting. And Yeri Prohaska versus Glover Teixeira back at UFC 275 was one of the most exciting fights I've ever seen. Maybe even the best MMA fight of all time. Definitely the fight of the year of 2022. And I was just super disappointed to hear this news. And not only that, UFC 282 has some good prelims, has some good early prelims. But the main card is in shambles at this point. I mean, we have Bryce Mitchell versus Ilya Taporia. That is a great fight. But outside of that, I mean, the main card, I don't know what fight they're going to elevate to the main card now, but the fight card is looking barren. The main card that you're going to have to pay for. I mean, Patty Pimlet versus Jarrett Gordon is in the co-main event. That has no business being in the co-main event. I know people are going to say, well, Patty's popular, this and that. Two unranked lightweight fighters are the co-main event of a pay-per-view. You know, I just, I can't subscribe to that. I just, I, I'm not happy with that. I don't know how they're going to reshuffle this card around, but the main card of 282 is not looking particularly good right now. And I just think that UFC 282, it was pretty good and pretty deep before. It loses this main event. It is a massive blow. And what did they initially try to do? By the way, Yuri Prohaska has a shoulder injury. He injured his shoulder at Extreme Couture in Las Vegas while he was training. I think it was either Saturday or Friday, sometime in the last week or so. He injured his shoulder, and the UFC has come out and said, this is one of the worst shoulder injuries they've ever seen. And I know people are speculating about USADA. We're going to talk about it in a minute. But they're saying, basically, Yuri Prohaska, we don't know when he's going to come back. Yuri Prohaska says he's hoping to come back in maybe six months or so, but they have absolutely no idea. So that's why, you know, I think that Yuri Prohaska relinquished his belt because I think maybe six months is hopeful 
Maybe his shoulder is completely destroyed. Maybe they're saying, okay, six months is the best case scenario. So best case scenario, we're talking about May or June of next year. And I know they put interim belts for less fights, but you know, I, I guess when they're looking at it, and I think the UFC kind of advised Yuri to do this. I don't think Yuri just came out of the blue and said, you know what? I'm going to vacate. I, I really don't think he's he's doing that. And, and I know they're going to give him a title shot when he returns. And we're going to talk about that also later in this video. But I think the doctors probably said six months, best case scenario, but probably a year. And I'm just speculating there, but it has to be a substantial period of time where the UFC said, you know what? I think we're just going to have you vacate the belt and we're going to put a undisputed title on the line at UFC 282. And also, I think in the UFC's eyes, that adds a little bit more intrigue to the fight because now you have Magomed Ankalaev versus Jan Blachowicz fighting for the undisputed light heavyweight title. And I think they really have no idea when Yuri Prohaska is going to be back. He might not be back till 2024. It may be terrible. The way they're hyping it up as one of the worst injuries they've ever seen, I think it's really possible that he's out the entire 2023. I'm not a medical doctor. This is pure speculation, but you get the point. Now, as soon as Yuri Prohaska pulled out of the fight, the UFC tried to book Magomed Ankalaev versus Glover Teixeira, but Glover Teixeira said, absolutely not. And I know people are going to clown on Glover and say, you're 43 years old. You may never get another shot again, but I don't blame him. Who wants to fight Magomed Ankalaev, a completely stylistic, different matchup from Yuri Prohaska on two weeks notice? You know, I figured he wouldn't want to take it. And I know for a fact, and I tweeted this out before this news even became public about what happened with Glover Teixeira. I said if they would have offered him Jan Blachowicz, he would have took it in a heartbeat. Because he knows what he did to Jan Blachowicz back at UFC 267. And I think he's confident he would do it again. And that news came out. Apparently, he asked the UFC for Jan Blachowicz. The UFC said, no, we want to put Magomed Anka live in there. And Glover said, okay, I'm out. Now, I don't know what's going to happen to Glover. He's 43 years old. I have a feeling the UFC likes Glover, it seems. But I have a feeling at this point in time, they're just going to look for an off-ramp with Glover to share. I don't think they're going to put him back in a title fight. There maybe is a chance if, if maybe this fight, Magomed Ankalaya versus Jan Blachowicz crowns a champion, and then maybe Yuri's going to be out for so long, so they're going to do another title fight. But they have Jamal Hill kind of coming up in the division. You have Ryan Spann, who just got a big win over Dominic Reyes. He's kind of coming up in the division. And I think they might say, you know what? We don't want Glover to share a win in the belt and retiring with it. So we're not going to give him a title shot anymore. He refused to help us, quote unquote, save UFC 282. And I'm talking in the UFC terms. I'm not saying this is what I think. But I think there's a real possibility Glover Teixeira never fights in a title fight again at his age. But I don't blame him for not taking a fight against Magomed Ankh Live on two weeks notice when he's training for Yuri Prohaska. That would have been a nightmare matchup. He most likely would have lost. Now, as far as the new title fight that we are getting, Magomed Ankh Live versus Jan Blachowicz, I think this is a fun fight. I think this fight makes perfect sense when you look at the UFC rankings. But I do think this is a bit of a mismatch. For my early prediction, I am going, and it's only a little bit early because it's really only like two weeks away at this point. But I am going to go with Magomed Ankalaev. I saw what happened to Jan Blachowicz against Glover Teixeira. Magomed Ankalaev has great wrestling, great grappling, great ground to pound. He has power in both his hands. He has good kicks. He has a variety of attacks. He's not just looking out, going out there and just looking to wrestle nonstop. I know Jan Blachowicz has that legendary Polish power. I believe he can put any man to sleep. And that's what makes this fight very interesting. Because Magomed ankalaev has been caught and hurt in the past. He got hurt by Thiago Santos. And Magomed Ankalaev sometimes will coast in fights and leaves openings for his opponent to capitalize on. And Jan Blachowicz can knock out any man in the 205-pound division. But I just think Ankalaev is going to go out there. He's going to fight at range. He's going to pick his spots, take him down, control him on the ground, and probably eventually find like a ground and pound finish maybe in the third round or so, maybe in the second round. Maybe even find a submission on Jan Blachowicz. Uh, I just think Ankalaev is a new breed of light heavyweight. I believe for a while he's the future of the light heavyweight division. And I even would favor Ankalaev over Yuri, a Yuri Prohaska. Uh, and that's a fight that I really wanted to see. Honestly, I wanted, I know Yuri Prohaska versus Glover Teixeira, the first fight was amazing. But honestly, I didn't really want to see the rematch. As crazy as that sounds. Because I didn't want to see Glover possibly win the belt back and then retire with it and kind of put a shadow over the legitimacy of the light heavyweight division. And I thought Magomed Ankalaev 
Could have got the next shot had he had a decisive win over Anthony Smith. And I know we finished Anthony Smith and it was impressive, but there was the whole leg, leg injury situation. So it kind of put a shadow over that win. And they end up putting them both on this card. And I think if Yuri Prohaska or Glover Teixeira, whoever would have won, if the fight went through as originally scheduled, if Magomed Ankalaev beat Jan Blachowicz, he would have been next in line for a title shot. But I think he gets it done against Jan Blachowicz. As far as the whole Yuri Prohaska USADA situation. Now, I believe there is more to this story that we are not being told. And first off, there is a theory going around that Yuri Prohaska has now been caught by USADA, and that's why he has relinquished his light heavyweight title. Because what happens is USADA changed the rules a couple years ago, where when they pop someone, they have to do their full investigation, hear all the appeals for the fighter before they announce the news. Because there were some fighters that the news was coming out, they were getting absolutely slammed by the fans, slammed by the media, and then it would come out a totally different story when they investigated it. So they changed the rules where they basically keep these investigations in secret until the final result. And there's some people saying, well, I think that's why Yuri Prohaska relinquished the belt because USADA was testing him nonstop. USADA has tested him, I think, like 50 times in 2022. It was absolutely insane. They were basically, I think at one point they tested him like 15 times in a month, 16 times in a month, which is basically every other day. And what I believe there is more to the story with Yuri Prohaska, they are not just randomly picking out Yuri Prohaska and testing him 50 times. I believe somewhere along the line, whether it be with the urinalysis or some type of blood work they've gotten from Yuri Prohaska in the past, I think something has shown where it's not necessarily illegal, but it's a red flag and it's an abnormality. And I think what's going on is USADA is deciding to do increased testing on Yuri Prohaska because of whatever they may have found. It may be totally normal for Yuri Prohaska, but I think they found something that they deem suspicious and that's why they have been testing him nonstop. But I don't believe that behind the scenes they've concocted this whole elaborate story that Yuri Prohaska's injured and and or Yuri Prohaska's been popped by USADA and we're gonna lie and say he got injured. He was 100% injured in Las Vegas at Extreme Couture. He has a shoulder injury. Apparently, it's a terrible injury that needs surgery and he's gonna need a lot of rehab before he returns. But this is a worst case scenario for Yuri Prohaska because now potentially he hasn't fought since June of this year. So he's basically already been out for six months. If he's out at the bare minimum for another six months, he's going to come back after a year-long layoff and potentially fight Magomed Ankalaev. That sounds like an absolute nightmare. And then he's returning from a horrific shoulder injury. Who knows if he's even going to be the same? And having a long layoff combined with shoulder surgery and rehabilitation, I just think that's a recipe for disaster. And there is a real possibility that Yuri Prohaska never holds the light heavyweight title ever again. And, you know, somebody said this in the live stream I did earlier tonight, that they did not think Yuri Prohaska was going to hold the light heavyweight title for a long time, but they wanted to at least watch him crash and burn. And I couldn't have agreed with that anymore. Yuri Prohaska is one of the most exciting MMA fighters ever. And I know he's going to return to a title shot because the UFC is not going to give him a tune-up fight. They don't really do that, you know, unless you're Conor McGregor coming back and fighting Cowboy Cerrone, who's on a two-fight TKO streak. They're not going to do that. So if Magomed Ankalaev beats Jan Blachowicz and Yuri Prohaska will be ready maybe next summer in 2023, they're going to immediately do Magomed Ankalaev versus Yuri Prohaska for the light heavyweight title. And I just... Don't think that's really optimal circumstances for Yuri Prohaska, who fights so recklessly and has holes in his game as far as wrestling, to come back and fight a guy like Magomed Ankalaev if he's able to defeat Jan Blachowicz. Now, let's say Jan Blachowicz wins, which is also a real possibility. He has that crazy power. He could KO Ankalaev. Yuri Prohaska versus Jan Blachowicz sounds like a lot of fun because you have Yuri Prohaska's wild, reckless style, and you have Jan Blachowicz who has the nastiest power in the light, weight, light heavyweight division, arguably. So that's a really compelling fight, too. But this is just a terrible circumstance. Glover Teixeira is probably not, never going to be in a title fight again. Yuri Prohaska is, I mean, he's going to be out for a while, six months at the minimum. And I find it hard to believe. I think it's going to end up being longer than that. And it's just a terrible situation. 
And also, I'm still wondering what's going on with that USADA situation because there's no way they are just randomly testing him 50 times in 2022. That is crazy. That's basically at least once a week. That is straight up insanity that they are testing him that much. And I'm wondering if eventually, if there is something suspicious in that urine, in that blood, if they're eventually going to find the root cause, which may be a banned substance, but that is a hundred percent pure speculation. I don't know, but I really, you know, there's, there's no other fighters getting tested that many times by USADA. It just doesn't add up. And I wish somebody would ask Dana White or the UFC about it. I know he would probably defer and say, I don't have an answer, but someone should definitely be asking Jeff Nowinski about this, the head of USADA. I'd be really interested to see his answer. But again, UFC 282 is now Magomed Ankalaev versus Jan Blachowicz for the undisputed light heavyweight title. Let me know what you guys think of all this down in the comments. Don't forget to like the video and thank you so much for watching.